Chapter 22 Pramaya Prayojan Tattva It was Ikadashi, and the Vaishnavas were performing kirtan on the large raised platform beneath the bakul tree in Srivasanga. Some were sighing heavily, saying, Ha Goranga, Ha Nityananda. None of them could understand in what kind of bhav their revered elderly Babaji was absorbed. Before their eyes, he became stunned. Then after some time, he burst into tears, crying, Woe is me! Alas! Where is my Rupa? Where is my Sanatan? Where is my Das Goswami? Where is my Krishnadas Kaviraj, the dearmost brother of my heart? Where have they gone, abandoning me all alone? Fie on me that I remain alive, simply tolerating the pain of their separation. I am undone by their separation. Even the remembrance of Radha Kund is troublesome to me. My life force writhes in agony. Only the vision of Rupa Sanatan will save my forlorn life. I have not given up my life, even though separated from them. I am simply condemned in every way. Speaking in this way, he began to roll in the dust of the courtyard. All the Vaishnavas there said, Babaji, be patient. Rupa and Raghunath are in your heart. Look here. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu are dancing before you. Oh, oh, where? Babaji suddenly leapt to his feet and saw before him Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Nityananda Prabhu, Sri Advaita Prabhu, Sri Gadadhar, Sri Vas, and all the devotees performing kirtan. They were all dancing completely absorbed in Mahabhav. Seeing this scene, he said, Blessed is Mayapur. Only Sri Mayapur can remove the grief of separation from Braj. When the scene disappeared, he went on dancing for a long time. Later, becoming peaceful, he sat in his cottage. Just then, Vijay Kumar and Brajanath came and offered obeisances at his lotus feet. Seeing them, Babaji Maharaj was very pleased and said, How is your bhajan? Both of them humbly folded their hands and said, We need your mercy, for it is everything to us. It is only because of so much Sukriti, pious activities, accumulated over many births, that we could so easily attain the shelter of your lotus feet. Since it is Ikadashi today, with your permission we will observe Nijal fasting. We have come to take your darshan. Babaji, you too are blessed. Very soon you will attain the state of bhav. Vijay, Prabhu, what is the state of bhav? So far you have not told us anything about this. Kindly bestow your mercy upon us by speaking on this subject. Babaji, up to this point I have only given you instructions concerning the practice of sadhan. By continually practicing sadhan, one gradually comes to the perfected stage. Bhav is the preliminary condition which heralds the stage of perfection, Siddha Avashta. Sri Dasamula 10a gives the following description of this perfected state. Svarupavashtane Madura Rasabhavo Daya Iha Raje Radha Krishna Svajana Janabhavan Hridi Vahan Paranande Pritim Jagad Atula Sampat Sukamaho Vilasakye Tatve Parama Paricharyam Salabate In the mature stage of Sadhan Bhakti, when the jiva becomes situated in his Swarup, then by the influence of the Hladini potency, the state of Bhav in Madhuryaras arises within him. In other words, the mood to follow in the footsteps of the dearmost associates of Sri Sri Radha Krishna in Braj arises in his heart. Gradually he obtains happiness and prosperity that is unsurpassed in this world in the form of the supreme service of Paramananda Tattva, which is known as Vilas. There is no greater gain than this for the jiva. This shloka describes Prayojan Tattva, the stage of Prem. The first stage of Prem is Bhav. Prabhu ka ko jiva katam, 
edamachid vishvam itiva. Vichari aitan artan hari, bhajana krit chastra chatura. Abed arsham daraman sakalam, aparadam pariharan. Harer naman andam pibati, haridaso harijanai. Dasamula 10b. Who is Krishna? Who am I, the Jiva? What is this temporary material achit world and the eternal spiritual chit world? He, who is exclusively devoted to the bhajan of Sri Hari and has made an intelligent analysis of the Vaishnava Shastras under the guidance of Shuddha Bhaktas, who has abandoned all offenses and attachment to Dharma and Adharma, and who can consider and dispose of all questions, that servant of Sri Hari drinks the sublime beverage of Sri Hari Nam in the company of other Harijans. This Dasamula is a compilation of unparalleled beauty, in which all of Sri Man Mahaprabhu's instructions have been expressed concisely. Vijay I would like to hear the exalted position of Das Mula in brief. Babaji Then listen. Sam Sevya Dasha Mulang Vai Hitva Vidyang Ayang Jana Baba Pushtim Tata Tushtim Labate Sadhu Sangataha Das Mula Mahatmya when the jiva studies and carefully follows this dasamula, he throws far away material disease in the form of ignorance. Thereafter, through the association of sadhus, he obtains the nourishment of bhav and becomes fully satisfied. Vijay Prabhu, may all of us wear the necklace of this incomparable dasamula about our necks. We will recite this dasamula every day and offer respectful obeisances unto Sriman Mahaprabhu. Now kindly elaborate on the subject of Bhav, Bhav Tattva. Babaji The characteristic feature of Bhav is that it is situated in unalloyed goodness, Shuddha Shattva Vishesh Rup Tattva. It can be compared to a tiny ray of the Prem Sun. The constitutional characteristic, Swarup Lakshan, of Bhav is that it is situated in unalloyed goodness, Vishuddha Sattva. Bhav is also known by the name Rati and is sometimes called a sprout of Prem, Premankur. The propensity for divine knowledge, Samvitvriti, is an aspect of the all enlightening internal potency, Swarup Shakti, and is the state of unalloyed goodness, Shuddha Sattva, having no connection with Maya. When this sanvit vritti combines with the propensity for unalloyed bliss, pladini vritti, the essential aspect of that combination is called bhav. One obtains knowledge of an object, vastu, by means of the propensity for consciousness, sanvit vritti, and one tastes that object through the propensity for unalloyed bliss, pladini vritti. Krishna is the supreme object, and his Swarup can only be known through the all-enlightening propensity of Swarup Shakti, and not by the mental faculty of the marginal jivas. When the Swarup Shakti manifests herself within the heart of the jiva by the mercy of Krishna or of his Bhakta, then the cognitive faculty, Samvit Vritti, of the Swarup Shakti begins to act within the heart. When that happens, knowledge of the spiritual realm Chit Jagat is revealed. The spiritual world is constituted of Sudha Sattva, whereas the material world is constituted of a combination of the three material modes of Sattva, Raja, and Tama. The essential combination of Hladini with the knowledge of the spiritual world enables one to taste the sweetness of that spiritual realm, and when that taste attains fullness, it is called Prem. If Prem is compared to the sun, Bhav can be compared to a ray, Kiran, of the sun. The constitutional nature, Swarup, of Bhav is that it is a ray of the sun of Prem, and its unique characteristic, 
visheshata, is that it purifies the heart of the jiva and thus causes the heart to become softened or melted, mashrina. The word ruchi signifies three desires. These are, one, the desire to attain the service of Radha and Krishna, praptyavilas. Two, the desire to do that which is favorable for Krishna's pleasure, anukul avilas. And three, the desire to serve Krishna with love and affection, soharda avilas. Bhav can be described as the first glimpse of prem. The word masrina means softness and melting of the heart. Bhav has been described in the Tantra as the preliminary state of prem, and when it arises, haripulation and other transformations of ecstasy, sattvic vikar, are manifested slightly. However, the state of bhav is self-established, swata siddha, in the nitya siddha bhaktas, which means that suddha is eternally present in them, so there is no question of it becoming manifest in them. In the Bada Jiva, this state of Bhav first manifests in the mental faculties, Manovriti, and then becomes identified, Swarupata, with them. Therefore, although Bhav is self manifest, Svayam Prakash, it appears that it did not exist previously, and that its manifestation was brought about by something else, Prakasya. The natural function of Bhav is to reveal the intrinsic identity, Swarup, of Krishna and his sweet pastimes. Bhav manifests in the mental faculties, Manovriti, yet it appears to have been manifested by some other faculty of knowledge. In reality, the nature, Swarup, of Rati is self-tasting, Swayam Asvadana Swarup. In other words, it is itself the object of taste and enjoyment for the bhakta, and yet at the same time it becomes the cause of the Bada Jiva relishing Krishna and his Leela. Rajanath How many types of Bhav are there? Babaji There are two types of Bhav arising from two different causes. The first is Bhav that has arisen as a result of ardent spiritual practice. Sadhan Abhinivesh Jabhav. And the second is Bhav that has arisen due to Krishna's mercy, or the mercy of Krishna's bhakta, Prasad Jabhav. Bhav that arises from the practice of sadhan is the most commonly observed. Bhav arising from special mercy is very rare. Brajanath. What is Bhav arising from practice? Sadhan Abhinivesh Jabhav Babaji, there are two kinds of Bhav arising from practice, one on the Vaidhi Marg and the other on the Raganuga Marg. Ruchi appears first, before Bhav, and it is followed by attachment, a Shakti to Krishna, and finally Rati. I consider Bhav and Rati to be the same, because this is the opinion of the Puranas and the Shastras concerning the performance of the dramatic arts, Natya Shastras. In the case of Bhav arising from Vaidhi Sadhan, Shraddha comes first, and then gives rise to Nishta, which in turn develops into Ruchi. However, in the case of Bhav arising from Raganuga Sadhan, Ruchi is produced immediately. Brajanath What is Bhav arising from the mercy of Krishna, or his Bhakta, Prasad Jabhav Babaji Bhav arising from the mercy of Krishna or his Bhakta, Prasad Jabhav, is Bhav that occurs spontaneously, without the performance of any kind of sadhan. Babaji Krishna's mercy is bestowed in three ways. 1. By words, Vachik. 2. By granting vision, Alok Dan and 3. By grace manifest in the heart, Harda. Suppose that Krishna bestows his mercy upon some Brahmana by saying, O best of the twice-born, 
may supremely auspicious, blissful, and uninterrupted bhakti arise within you. Simply by such words, Vachik Prasad Jabhav arises within the heart. The rishis residing in the forest had never previously seen Krishna, but when they attained his darshan, Bhav arose within their hearts. Such is the power of Krishna's mercy. This is an example of Bhav arising due to Krishna's granting his vision, Alok Dan. Bhav that arises within the heart due to mercy is called Harda Bhav, and this is observed in the life history of Shukadeva Goswami and other bhaktas. When Sri Krishna descended as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there were many instances of these three kinds of bhav arising from his mercy. One cannot count the number of people who were filled with bhav when they saw Sriman Mahaprabhu. Jagai and Madai are examples of those who obtained bhav because of the Lord's words, and Jiva Goswami obtained bhav from within his heart, harda bhav, by Sri Goranga's mercy. Brajanath, what is Bhav arising from the mercy of a Bhakta? Babaji, Dhruva and Prahlad obtain Bhav for Bhagavan by Narada Muni's mercy, and Bhav Bhakti arose in the hearts of innumerable people by the mercy of Sri Rupa, Sanatan, and other associates, Parsad of Krishna. Vijay, what are the symptoms of the appearance of Bhav? Babaji, the following characteristics begin to manifest in the sadhak when bhav appears. 1. Kshanti, tolerance. 2. Avyarta kalatva, concern that time should not be wasted. 3. Virakti, detachment. 4. Mana sunyata, freedom from pride. 5. Ashabanda, bound by hope. 6. Utkanta, Deep longing. 7. Namagane Sadaruchi. Taste to always chant Sri Hari Nam. 8. Ashaktis Tat Gunakyane. Attraction for hearing about Sri Hari's transcendental qualities. And 9. Tadvasiti Stale Pariti. Affection for the places of Krishna's pastimes. Vijay. What is Kshanti? Tolerance. Babaji, Kshanti means that one remains peaceful even when there is cause for anger or mental agitation. Kshanti may also be called Kshama. Vijay, what is Avyarta Kalatva? Concern that time should not be wasted. Babaji, Avyarta Kalatva means that one does not let a moment pass in vain and thus is incessantly engaged in Hari Bhajan. Vijay, please explain the meaning of virakti, detachment. Babaji, virakti is disinterest in sense gratification. Vijay, can those who have taken vesh, renounced order, sannyas vesh or babaji vesh, assert that they are detached? Babaji, vesh is a matter of social etiquette. When bhav appears within the heart, Taste for the spiritual world becomes very strong, and taste for the material world gradually diminishes. Finally, when Bhav fully manifests, taste for the mundane world becomes practically nil, sunya praya. This is called detachment, virakti. A detached Vaishnava is one who has attained virakti and then takes Vaishnava vesh to diminish his necessities. However, the Shastras do not sanction taking Vaish prior to the appearance of Bhav. That is not real Vaish at all. Sriman Mahaprabhu taught this lesson to the whole world when he punished Chota Haridas. Vijay What is Mana Sunyata? Freedom from Pride. Babaji Pride, Abhiman, arises when one identifies with one's wealth, strength, beauty, high position, high caste, good family, lineage, etc. Manasunyata means being free from pride in spite of possessing such material qualification. Padma Purana gives an excellent example of Manasunyata. There was a wise emperor 
who ruled all other prominent kings. However, when by good fortune Krishna Bhakti arose within his heart, he gave up his opulence and his pride in being the emperor and maintained his life by begging in the cities of his enemies. He offered respects to all, regardless of whether they were brahmanas or enemies. Vijay What is Asha Bandha? The bondage of hope. Babaji Asha Bandha means to engage the mind in bhajan, bound by the unswerving faith that Krishna will certainly bestow his mercy upon me. Vijay What is Utkanta? Deep longing. Babaji Utkanta is extreme greed to obtain one's heart's desire. Vijay What is Nam Kirtan Ruchi? Taste for chanting Sri Hari Nam. Babaji Ruchi in Nam Kirtan means incessant engagement in Hari Nam with the faith, Vishvasa, that Sri Nam Bhajan is the highest of all the many types of Bhajan. Ruchi for Nam Kirtan is the key to attaining supreme auspiciousness. Another day I will explain the truth regarding Sri Hari Nam. Vijay What is Ashaktis Tad Gunakyane? Attachment to the descriptions of the transcendental qualities of Krishna. Babaji It is said in Sri Krishna Karinamrita Maduryad Api Maduram Man Matata Tasyakim Api Kaishoram Chapal Yad Api Chapalam Cheto Bata Harati Hanta Kim Kormaha Shri Krishna, as the transcendental Cupid, Manmata, is sweeter than the most sweet, and his adolescence is more restless than the most restless thing. The qualities of that transcendental Cupid, which defy description, are stealing my mind. Alas, what shall I do now? No matter how much one hears about Shri Krishna's qualities, one never becomes satiated. The attachment to hearing goes on increasing incessantly, and one never stops wishing to hear more and more. Vijay, what is Tad Vasati Stale Priti? Affection for the places of Krishna's pastimes. Babaji, when a bhakta performs parikram of Sri Navadvip Dham, he inquires as follows, O residents of the Dham, where is the birthplace of the dear most master of our life? In which direction would Mahaprabhu's kirtan party pass? Please tell me where our master used to perform his forenoon pastimes with the gopas. The residents of the Dham reply, This place where we are standing is Sri Mayapur, the elevated place that you see directly in front of us, surrounded by the grove of tulsi plants, is the very place where the most precious appearance of Sriman Mahaprabhu took place. Just see the villages of Ganga Naga, Simulya, Gadigacha, Majida, and others. Sriman Mahaprabhu's first Sankirtan party passed through these very villages. Hearing such sweet talks, saturated with prem from the mouths of the residents of Goda, his body thrills with horripulation, his heart becomes overwhelmed with bliss, and tears trickle from his eyes. In this way, he performs parikram of all Mahaprabhu's pastime places. This is called affection for the places where the Lord performed His pastimes. Tadvasati Stale Priti Brajanath Should we understand that Rati towards Krishna has arisen in every individual in whom we observe this kind of emotion? Babaji No. Rati is emotion, bhav, that arises spontaneously towards Krishna. Similar emotion may be observed in relation to other objects, but it cannot be called rati. Rajanath, will you kindly give one or two examples to make this subject clear? Babaji, suppose a man desires liberation, but the dry and difficult worship of the Nirvishesh Brahm seems troublesome to him. Then he hears from somewhere that one can very easily attain mukti simply by uttering the names of Bhagavan. For example, Ajamil obtained mukti easily by uttering the name of Narayan. 
When the man hears this, he becomes overjoyed. As he remembers the power of Sri Nam to give liberation, he becomes agitated with ecstasy, thinking that he will receive liberation easily. He chants Sri Hari Nam, weeps continuously, and falls down unconscious. In this instance, the name uttered by the sadhak who desires liberation is not Shudanam, and the bhav that he displays is not Krishna Rati, Sudabhav, because his spontaneous feeling is not directed towards Krishna. His main objective is to obtain mukti and not Krishna Prem. The name that he utters is called Nam Abbas, and his emotional display, Bhav, is called Bhav Abbas. Another example is that of a person who worships Durga Devi in order to obtain material enjoyment. He prays, Please give me benedictions, please give me wealth. Then, thinking that Durga Devi will fulfill his heart's desire, as soon as she becomes pleased, he exclaims, O Durga, and rolls on the ground before her crying. This person's bhav, when he cries and falls on the ground, is not Shuddha bhav. It is sometimes described as bhav abhas, and sometimes as false or impure emotion, kubhav. Bhav cannot arise unless one performs unadulterated worship of Krishna, Sudha Krishna Bhajan. Bhav is known as Kubhav or Bhav Abbas if it arises from a desire for material enjoyment, Bhoga, or liberation, Moksha, even if it is related to Krishna. The word Kubhav refers to any sort of Bhav that may arise in the heart of one who is contaminated with Mayavad philosophy. Even if such a person lies unconscious for seven paharas, this display cannot be called bhav. Aho, even the most elevated liberated souls, who are freed from all kinds of desires, incessantly search out Bhagavad Rati. It is the supreme secret, and Krishna does not easily bestow it, even on completely sincere bhaktas, whose practice of bhajan is fully accomplished. How then can it arise in the hearts of those who do not have Sudha Bhakti and who are contaminated with desires for material enjoyment and liberation? Vrajanath, Prabhu, it is often observed that when those who desire material enjoyment and liberation perform Harinam Sankirtan, they manifest the bodily symptoms of bhav that you have described. How is this to be understood? Babaji, only foolish people are astonished to see the external symptoms of bhav in such people. Those who understand bhav tattva properly call this sort of bhav the semblance of rati, rati abhas, and they remain far away from it. Vijay, how many kinds of rati abhas are there? Babaji, there are two kinds of rati abhas. Reflected Ratyabhas, Pratibimba Ratyabhas, and Shadow Ratyabhas, Chaya Ratyabhas. Vijay, what is Pratibimba Ratyabhas? Babaji, people who desire liberation think that one can only obtain mukti through Brahmagyan, but the spiritual discipline of Brahmagyan is difficult and troublesome. Some of them come to understand that mukti may be achieved simply by performing Harinam, and that one may obtain Brahmagyan in this way very easily and without hard labor. When they think like this, they become blissful, expecting to obtain mukti without having to undergo great difficulty. Then this semblance, abhas, of the bodily transformations, such as tears, horripulation, etc., appear in their bodies. Such transformations are known as Pratibimba Abbas. Brajanath, why are they called reflected Pratibimba? Babaji, if those who desire liberation or material sense enjoyment have the good fortune to associate with advanced bhaktas, they also begin to adopt the process of Harinam Kirtan and so on. At that time, some reflection of the Bhav moon in the sky of the Shudabhakta's heart, also appears in the heart of those who are thirsty for liberation. This reflection 
is called Pratibimba. Shudabhav never arises in the hearts of those who desire material sense enjoyment or liberation. But Bhav Abbas arises in them when they see the Bhav of Shudabhaktas. That Bhav Abbas is known as Pratibimba Abbas, and it does not generally produce any enduring benefit. It only bestows material enjoyment and liberation, and then it disappears. Such Bhav Abbas may also be understood to be a kind of Nam Aparad. Brajanath, please explain the nature of Chaya Bhav Abbas. Babaji, when a Kanishta Bhakta, who is unacquainted with knowledge of the Self, Atmatattva, associates with activities, time, places and bhaktas that are dear to Hari, a shadow, Chaya of Rati may appear. Compared to Rati itself, this shadow is insignificant by nature and unsteady, but it creates curiosity as to the Rati that the Shuddha Bhaktas experience, and it destroys sorrows. This is called Chaya Ratya Bhas. The Bhakti of these Bhaktas may be pure up to a certain limit, but it is not resolute, and that is why it gives rise to Rati Abbas. In any case, such Chaya Bhav Abbas only arises through the influence of many pious activities. By the association of Vaishnavas, Satsanga, Chaya Bhav Abbas becomes pure and subsequently gives rise to Shuddha Bhav. Nonetheless, one should bear in mind that no matter how developed this Bhav Abbas may be, it gradually wanes like the moon in the dark half of a lunar month if one commits some offence towards a pure Vaishnava. What to speak of Bhava Bhas, even Shuddha Bhav, will gradually vanish if one commits offences towards Krishna's Bhaktas. If one repeatedly associates with those who desire liberation, his Bhav will also become Bhav Abbas, or he may fall victim to the pride of thinking himself to be Ishwara. This is why it is sometimes seen that when new Bhaktas are dancing, they develop the desire for liberation. These new bhaktas do not think carefully and consider their situation, and so they associate with those who seek liberation, which results in disturbances. New bhaktas should therefore carefully avoid the association of people who aspire for liberation. Occasionally the state of bhav is seen to arise in someone suddenly and without apparent cause. The explanation for this is that he practiced sadhan extensively in his previous birth. But that practice could not bear fruit until now because of various kinds of hindrances or impediments. However, Shuddha Bhav suddenly arose in his heart when those obstacles were removed. Sometimes an excellent state of Bhav like this may also arise suddenly because of Krishna's causeless mercy. This kind of bhav is known as Sri Krishna Prasad Jabhav. One should not criticize a person in whom true bhav has manifested, even though one may observe some slight fault in his behavior. For once bhav has arisen, the sadhak becomes completely successful in all his endeavors. Under such circumstances, it is not possible for him to behave sinfully. But if any sinful behavior is sometimes observed, it should be understood in one of two ways. The Mahapurush Bhakta may have performed some sinful activity by force of circumstances, but he cannot possibly remain in that condition permanently. Alternatively, some semblance of sin, Pap Abbas, from his previous life has not been completely destroyed and is still present even after Bhav has arisen in him although it will be destroyed very soon. One should think like this and not pay any attention to the commonplace faults that may be seen in bhaktas, for it is nam aparad to do so. The Nasringa Purana forbids us to absorb our attention in such faults. Bhagavati cha haravananya cheta brisha malinopi virajate manushyaha nahi shasha kalusha Chavahi Kadachit Timira Paro 
Bhavatam Upaiti Chandraha. Just as the moon is never obscured by darkness, even though covered with black spots, similarly, a person exclusively devoted to Sri Hari remains glorious, though by appearance he may be wicked and depraved. It should not be concluded from this instruction that a bhakta repeatedly engages in sinful activities. Once a bhakta has developed nishta in bhakti, he will have no inclination to sin further. However, as long as the material body exists, there is a chance that sinful activity will occur unexpectedly. If a bhakta is exclusively devoted, the influence of his bhajan immediately burns to ashes all kinds of sins. Just as a blazing fire easily consumes a small heap of cotton, and he becomes cautious not to become victimized by any sinful activity again. All kinds of sinful actions are dissipated at the stage of steady, uninterrupted Ananya Bhakti. So it may be clearly understood that those who repeatedly engage in sinful activities have not yet developed this type of Bhakti. To engage repeatedly and knowingly in sinful activity while practicing Bhakti Yoga is Nam Aparad, which uproots Bhakti completely and casts it aside. Bhaktas therefore keep themselves distant from such offences. Rati is by nature restless, ashanti, warm, vigorous and blissful, because it is perpetually full of increasing spiritual longing, abhilas. Although it produces warmth in the form of Sancharibhav, it is more cooling than millions of moons, and it tastes as sweet as nectar. When Brajanath and Vijay Kumar heard this explanation of Bhav Tattva, they were wonderstruck and sat silently for a while, absorbed in thoughts of Bhav. After some time they said, Prabhu, the powerful rain of your nectarian instructions has created a flood of prame in our scorched hearts. Now what should we do? Where should we go? We cannot understand anything. It is very difficult for us to attain Bhav because our hearts are bereft of humility. We are full of pride because of our Brahmana birth, and the only thing that can save us is your abundant love and mercy. If you bestow a drop of prema on us, we shall certainly achieve our objective. Our only hope is that we have been able to establish a spiritual relationship with you. We are extremely poor, wretched and destitute, and you are Krishna's dear associate, and supremely merciful. Please be merciful to us and instruct us as to our duty. Vijay Kumar took advantage of the opportunity and said, At this very moment, Prabhu, the desire is arising in me to renounce householder life and obtain residence as a servant of your lotus feet. Brajanath is just a boy and his mother wants him to become a grihasta, but he does not desire to do so. Please give your instruction as to what he should do in this connection. Babaji, you have both received Krishna's mercy. You should serve Krishna by transforming your household into Krishna's household. Everyone should act according to the instructions which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave to the world. He taught that there are two ways by which one may worship Bhagavan while in this world. One may live as a householder, or in the renounced order. Until one is qualified to take up the renounced order, he should remain a householder and engage in Krishna's service. In the first twenty-four years of his manifest pastimes, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu displayed the ideal for a Grihastha Vaishnava, and during his last twenty-four years, he set the ideal for a renounced Vaishnava. Mahaprabhu's example as a Grihastha established the goal of householder life. In my opinion, you should also do the same. You should not think that one cannot obtain the goal of Krishna Prem in household life. Most of Mahaprabhu's favored devotees were Grihastas, and even Vaishnavas in the renounced order of life pray for the dust from the lotus feet of those Grihasta Bhaktas. The night was far advanced. Vijay Kumar and Brajanath 
spent the whole night in Shriva Sangha, chanting the glories of Sri Hari in the company of the other Vaishnavas. At dawn the next morning, they finished their ablutions, bathed in the Ganga, and then offered Dandavat Pranam at the feet of their Gurudev and the Vaishnavas. Then they again performed Sankirtan, took Mahaprasad, and returned home before noon. Vijay Kumar called his sister and said, Now Brajanath will marry, so you should make the necessary preparations. I am going to Moduruma for a few days. You can send news to me when you have fixed a date for the wedding. I shall come with other family members to enhance the auspicious marriage ceremony. I shall send my young brother, Harinath, here tomorrow. He will stay here and arrange everything. Vrajana's mother and paternal grandmother felt as if they had obtained sovereignty over the earth. Completely overjoyed, they presented Vijay Kumar with new clothes and other gifts before they bade him farewell. Thus ends the twenty-second chapter of Jaiva Dharma, entitled Pramaya Prayojan Tattva.